Welcome to Facial Plastics Friday, everyone. Dr. Grace here, and today we're going to be finishing or continuing our discussion on skin health. We talked about collagen last week, so if you have questions about collagen, check out last week's story. Today I'm going to talk about hyaluronic acid, and we're going to change the format up a little bit today. We're going to do question and answer. We had a story earlier this week asking you to send your questions, so Kate from our office doing our Instagram is going to fire the questions at me, and I'm going to answer. So Kate, whenever you're ready. All right. What is hyaluronic acid, and why is it important for your skin? So hyaluronic acid is basically a sugar molecule. It's a polysaccharide, um, and it absorbs water, and it's important in your skin for hydration. And so in between the collagen lattice and network in your skin that's giving your skin this support, you have these molecules of hyaluronic acid, which are made by your fibroblasts, so the same cells that make your collagen, and they can absorb up to a thousand times their weight uh, in water. And so they're what give your skin its um, hydration, its plumpness. If you think of a, a flower, and if it were dehydrated and wilting, and you put water in, the water will help it stand up because it has hydration and pressure. So that's what hyaluronic acid is. Where does hyaluronic acid come from? It comes from your fibroblasts. So in your skin, in your dermis, your fibroblasts are the cells that make collagen and hyaluronic acid and elastin, which we'll talk about next week. And those are the uh, proteins and the fibers or the sugars that make up the um, extracellular matrix of your skin. So the stuff that isn't cellular, that's giving your skin its structural support. What can I do to increase my skin's hyaluronic acid, topical or other treatments? Okay, so fibroblasts make your hyaluronic acid, and as you age, your fibroblasts become less active. Um, there's also studies that show that the more collagen that is around, the more hyaluronic acid is there, and they stimulate each other for production. And so things you can do to increase collagen are kind of the same that you can do to increase hyaluronic acid. So sunscreen's really important because you're gonna protect your fibroblasts and protect your collagen. Um, you can stimulate your fibroblasts to make more hyaluronic acid with microneedling radiofrequency techniques. I love the Profound. We're going to be showing my six month pictures in two weeks from now from my Profound result. And so Profound will stimulate the wound healing of those micro wounds, those uh, elegant injuries in the skin which um, produce hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is produced in all wounds. So if you do surgery or cut yourself when it's healing, your fibroblasts will make hyaluronic acid. So the treatments that will induce micro-controlled wounds will help produce it. So that's that's kind of topical and um, uh, device related. Um, you can also put topical hyaluronic acid, so like something like HA5, on your skin. So this is by Skin Medica. It's five different hyaluronic acids that get absorbed. Studies will show that this is dissolved pretty quickly in your skin, so it's not going to stay there. But what it does is it binds water, gives your skin an instant hydrated look. So if you have lots of fine lines around, you know the eyelid, the crow's feet, putting HA5 on those can plump them up and make them basically disappear temporarily if you're going out for the night. And there's some early evidence from the company uh, that if you use it consistently, it will help stimulate and make more hyaluronic acid. So uh, every skincare line will carry a version of a hyaluronic acid. So you can look at any medical skincare line. We love the Skin Medica HA5. Do hyaluronic acid cream work? Uh, they do. So they do work to temporarily plump up your skin and give it a hydrated look. It's like a super moisturizer. It's not going to give you long-term hyaluronic acid like something like Profound will do. What hyaluronic acid cream do you recommend? Uh, we, like I mentioned, we carry the um, Skin Medica HA5. It's a fantastic product. A lot of people love it. Nuvier has another product that we um, can get in. We don't carry it on the shelf usually. I'm blank down the name. Do you know the name, Kate? It's the uh, Altimage. Altimage. Um, you're not going to go wrong with a reputable skincare, medical skincare company like Skin Medica, like Vivier, using their HA5. So I'd recommend any of those. Isn't hyaluronic acid a filler? How does that work? <laughs> we have a nice prop for this. Yes. <laughs> so most fillers these days in 2021 are hyaluronic acid. Um, so it's the same molecule that is in your skin, but we can make it uh, synthetically. In the past, it was made from, of all things, rooster combs, the little thing that stands up on a rooster's um, head, or I guess is gobbler. Um, and you would take, because those are full of fibroblasts, you would be able to extract the hyaluronic acid from it. Now it's made through bacterial fermentation in the lab, so it's all sterile. And um, it is a uh, sugar. It's a mucopolysaccharide uh, that will bind water. And so depending on the size of the molecule and depending 
on how it's cross-linked will give you different viscosities or different stiffnesses of the gels. And so if you're looking at the Revenesse line, you know, we have shape and outline and contour and ultra. Ultra is going to be thinner and softer, so it might be good for fine lines and for lips. And something like contour, which is going to be stiffer, or shape, which is going to give you a really big lift because it's a stiffer, bigger molecule. So it works the same way as hyaluronic acid in your skin works in that um, adding this molecule will bind water to it and will give you not only a space filling effect from the gel, but then an expansion effect from the water. I've heard hyaluronic acid filler can migrate. Is that true? That is true. So the classic migration uh, problem with filler, with hyaluronic acid filler, is in the lip. So a lot of people will chase their upper lip lines, the smoker's lines they're sometimes called, with hyaluronic acid. And um, that is okay to a point. I kind of hate hyaluronic acid here because it can migrate. Even if you put it in your lip, it can migrate and it can make your look, lip look ducky, make it look kind of monkeyish. So when you see people with bad filler, it's usually because their lips stick out weird. Um, and that's because it's migrated. So often people will tell me, I never had filler up here, but my lip looks weird. It's because it's migrated from here in the vermilion up into the filtrum. Um, it has to do with the molecule, how it's cross-linked and how it moves through the tissue. Certain uh, fillers are more prone to that than others. And so uh, you have to be careful, make sure you see a, a experienced lip injector. Um, the good thing about that is that it can be dissolved. If it happens to you, the filler can be dissolved and you can correct it, but definitely it can migrate classically. It's from the lip, from the vermilion to the filtrum. Can you recommend a hypoallergenic brand? Uh, if we're talking about uh, injectable filler, hyaluronic acid itself is hypoallergenic. It is just a sugar, so it doesn't cause an allergy. If it's mixed with lidocaine, you may need to use a plain uh, filler. So every company, pretty much you can get a hyaluronic acid filler without lidocaine. Most of them have lidocaine in there for comfort, but usually an allergy is to the lidocaine. For the topical stuff, um, it would depend on what you're allergic to. I can't offhand name a hypo or a, a brand that has a product that's, that's marketed as being hypoallergenic. But again, these are pretty gentle standard skincare things from uh, reputable medical skincare companies and so I don't know of anybody that I've ever met that's had a reaction to something topical like HA5. Can you talk about filler staying in the face, migrating and not breaking down? So fillers um, will stay in your face, they're not going to migrate anywhere else out of your body. The classic places to see migration like I mentioned would be the lip where you get the shelfy kind of monkey uh, looking lip. Um, they are, are often talked about as being last, uh, lasting for about six months, but they can last longer. I've seen people that have had filler three years prior and they still have fullness in their lip that'll dissolve out. And so not breaking down um, with hyaluronic acid, that can happen. It tends to be someone that's had multiple injections, although that doesn't have to be true. But the more times you stick a needle in an area and add hyaluronic acid, the higher the chance that you may uh, have it persist longer or it may migrate. Um, again, you can dissolve it if that happens. The other place that we sometimes see it is here. So on the glenial angle, when someone's trying to define their jaw, sometimes if it's not placed properly, uh, it can make it look like it's in your parotid gland or it can be in your parotid gland and it can make you look like you have mumps. Um, it can also migrate there. So be careful with large volumes of filler in around the jawline and on the lip because it will migrate and it can look funny, uh, especially if you do it multiple times. Again, you can dissolve it out if it happens. It doesn't, it only migrates locally. It's not gonna move from here down into your neck or from your lip into your cheek. So it'll be within centimeters. And the last question, can my hyaluronic acid filler be removed? It can, so something like hyaluronidase, which is an enzyme, can be injected into the area that was treated. And it's a pretty um, widely dispersed enzyme. So when we inject it, it goes all through the tissues and it works quickly. Uh, usually when I do a lip injection on somebody who's been overfilled, you can see it disappear in the room as we're injecting it. I usually give it two days to settle and if we have to do a bit more, we can, but you can definitely totally remove it with hyaluronidase. A lot of people are worried that it will break down their normal hyaluronic acid and it doesn't um, to any clinically significant degree. So if you have a lot of gel sitting in your face, it's gonna attack that first and break it down. There is a formula for how much to put in depending on how much was injected. So if you know you have one syringe, I know how much hyaluronidase to put in to dissolve that, and you don't have to over flood the area to get it to go away. You cannot um, dissolve silicone. If you've ever had silicone injected and you cannot dissolve 
radiesce, which is calcium hydroxyapatite, and you cannot dissolve Sculptra. So those would be the ones that cause more problems when something goes wrong because you have to fix that surgically. That's it, that's all. All right, one last little plug. Easter's coming up. If you've been watching this video, there was a word floating around at one point, and that is your secret word that you're looking for. Have a great day, everyone.